Hey, what's up, y'all? Welcome back. My name is Chris Abbott, but all my friends just call me Abbo. And in this video, we're going to be talking about how to write good marketing copy coming up. Now, like, that's has to offer. Like, all right, y'all. So in this video, we're going to be walking through some copywriting techniques on how to write good marketing copy. And I'm going to show you the number one mistake that I see people make all the time. And I'll even walk you through a simple framework that you can apply every single time you're writing any type of marketing copy, whether it's for a social media post, whether it's for an ad, a direct mail piece, or for your website. So let's dive in. All right. So one of the common mistakes that I see a lot of churches make whenever they are writing marketing copy is that they fail to sit down at the beginning and actually think about who is it that I'm trying to reach, right? I know that sounds kind of funny, right? But we sit down and say, okay, well, we're writing an ad for our Easter service or a direct mail piece for our Christmas Eve service, right? Or we're going to put a little bit of copy on our homepage, the about page of our website, right? But you actually need to stop and think about and kind of ask yourself, wait a second, who am I trying to reach with this copy? So that's the most important thing up front is before you write a single word, ask yourself, who am I trying to reach? And when I say that, what I actually mean is let's actually give them a name and let's think of one person. The best way to write good marketing copy is to write to one person and one person only. By doing that, you're actually going to reach tons and tons of people, but you want to start out by writing to one. So it's important to remember you're not writing to a certain age demographic, right? You're not writing to people who are in ages 25 to 40 who have kids and are married, right? That's a huge, huge demographic, right? Think about the things that are keeping a 25 year old up at night versus the things that are keeping a 40 year old up at night. And the age of their kids is probably completely different, right? 25 year old probably has, you know, young kids, maybe elementary school age kids, right? While a 40 year old might have anywhere from elementary school age kids all the way up to high school or even college kids, right? So it's a completely different demographic. These two people are in completely different seasons of life. So what you want to do is you want to write to one person and you want to give them a name. So for example, let's say we decided that we're going to write to John. Let's say John has been married for 10 years, right? He's an entrepreneur. He owns a business and coming out of COVID, his business probably took a really big hit. So he may have had to lay off some of his staff, right? Which means that there was all that work he probably had to take upon himself. Now he's working more hours. He's working longer. Maybe he has to travel for his business. And his wife being a stay at home mom was home with the kids during COVID, right? So she probably had to figure out how to homeschool her kids for about a year right? Which is no easy feat while he's working longer hours and trying to figure out how to keep the family afloat, right? She's at home trying to figure out how to homeschool their kids. And that was probably a pretty rough patch for them for at least a year. Man, what did John have to do in order to stay in the game and keep his business going? Well, he probably had to float the business on credit cards for a while, right? So maybe he racked up a lot of debt trying to just keep things going. Maybe he had to use personal credit cards in order to make payroll and pay the bills and make sure that he was still marketing and bringing in new business. Now, John has been working long hours and traveling a lot while his wife's at home. There's probably a distance that's grown before them. He's racked up a lot of debt. He's probably consumed by business, the debt, and constantly worrying about everything that's coming in with the business and bringing in revenue and being able to make sure that everyone, including himself, gets a paycheck right? So what do their date nights look like? Well, on date night, it's probably tough. In fact, if he's traveling a lot and he's working a lot, then there probably aren't a lot of date nights, right? So when they are spending time together, she's probably frustrated because since all he can think about is the business, that's probably all he wants to talk about. She's probably frustrated. She probably wants to talk about the kids, but feels like he's disinterested and disconnected because all he can think about is business, right? When it's not that he's disinterested or disconnected with his kids, he's just under so much pressure that he's having trouble just kind of keeping it together and staying strong for his family. Now that we understand who John is, right? That he's 35 years old. He's been married for 10 years. He's got three kids. He's got a business. He's racked up debt. He's trying to stay alive. He's not having problems in his marriage, but things are a little bit of rocky and there's some space there. Now we know exactly what we need to say to John in order to bring him out to our men's event. We didn't just start saying, hey, let's just try to get every man out there 18 to 65. No, we said, hey, we're going to write to John who's 35, who's married with kids and who's going through some stuff, right? You want to ask yourself, what is keeping John up at night? What are some of the things that are bothering him and then we can actually write specific copy to John in order to be able to speak to him, make him feel like we're in his head and be able to invite him out to our men's event. 
All right, so number two is don't use someone else's copy for your church. All right, I see this a lot. A lot of times what'll happen is churches will, they'll go out and they'll see like a Facebook ad from another church or they'll go into a Facebook group and say, hey, does anyone have any good examples of a Facebook ad or a landing page or a church website? And then what they'll do is they'll go in and they'll literally just copy paste that same copy for their own church, right? So number one, that's actually illegal and it's unethical, right? Don't steal other people's hard work and don't steal their copy, but also, right, taking the copy that they wrote for their church and their demographic isn't going to necessarily work in your context, right? It's going to be a lot more successful if you actually sit down and try to think about who it is you're trying to reach and what the action is that you want them to take, right? So in the example we were talking about with John, if we want him to show up to our men's event, right, then we did the work of giving him a name and figuring out how old he is, what he's going through, right? And so now we can specifically write copy to him talking about some of those things that are keeping him up at night. So maybe we say, hey, have you been working long hours and traveling a lot lately? Man, like, does it feel like there's distance in your marriage, right? Maybe you love your wife, you love your kids, but you're so focused on your job or your business that you just don't have time to be the husband and father that you actually want to be. Well, come out to our Navy SEAL men's event as we're going to have Navy SEAL Jeff Bromstead come out and talk about the pressures of being able to juggle being a godly man running a business and being married and being a dad all at the same time. We want to invite you out to come out here on February 13th to our Navy SEAL men's event. Right? Do you think John's going to show up to that event? Absolutely, freaking lutely right? Like we were in his head. We talked about all the things that are kind of keeping him up at night and we're giving him the solutions to the problems that he's wrestling with daily, right? So this is the key to writing great marketing copy. Okay, so before I get to my last couple of points, man, if you like this video, if you found it valuable, would you make sure to like it and maybe share it with someone who is in the church world, maybe a church leader or a pastor who is trying to figure out how to write great copy, grow their church and attract new visitors, right? And if you make sure to hit that subscribe button, then you'll get all of our fresh content when we come out with it every single day, five days a week. All right, so point number three is that the magic sauce is in the words you write, not in the ad that you create. So one of the things that I hear all the time, in fact, you may even see it in some of the comments in some of my videos as people say, hey, Facebook ads don't work. Been there, done that, tried that, not going to happen. Facebook ads don't work in Texas. Or Facebook ads don't work here on the East Coast or they don't work in the Pacific Northwest. So they don't work here in the Midwest. Facebook ads work. The problem is most people just don't understand how important copy is, right? It's not that running a Facebook ad is a magic bullet and a bunch of people are going to show up on Sunday. You can actually waste a lot of money doing Facebook ads wrong, right? And Mark Zuckerberg, doesn't care. He's happy to take your money regardless. There's actually a formula to how to create great Facebook ads, right? Or great landing page copy or website copy or direct mail copy, whatever it is. Although if you're running direct mail, I just kind of threw up in my mouth a little bit saying that. Please don't run direct mail. It's a waste of money. We've got plenty of videos that we talk about that, but it's outdated. It's ineffective. And the best way to do it is actually use social media marketing to reach new people. But the important thing to understand is the magic sauces and the words that you write. That's why it's important to take time up front to figure out who it is that we're trying to talk to, right? And then what the action is that we want them to take. In the example that we've been using in this video, we've been talking about John, right? And we want him to come out to our men's event. Well, then we need to write words that are gonna connect with him on an emotional level. If people aren't having some type of emotional connection with your copy, then you're not gonna be able to get them to take action. And again, it doesn't matter if it's a Facebook ad or if it's a landing page or your website, it doesn't matter if you're writing copy, someone has to see that they have to read it and make an emotional connection in order for them to take action. Okay. So a simple framework that you can use whenever you're doing this is what I call hook interest action, right? So the first thing you want to do is you want to create some type of hook, right? And then you want to pique their interest and then you want to have a call to action, right? So a lot of people forget to actually have a call to action in their copy a lot of times, right? And this might even be on your about us page on a web website, everyone knows that you need to have your homepage on point, right? But a lot of people forget that the second most visited page on your website is your about page. And most people just talk about themselves, right? Don't talk about yourself. Don't just talk about like you and the church and your story. Talk about them and their story and invite them in to become a part of the movement that you're creating, right? So use that strategically to write copy, not about you, but about them, right? Because people don't care that your dog died. They care that their dog died. Strategically use your about page to to talk to other people. And one of the best things that you can remember is have a call to action on the about page. Since you know that a ton of traffic is going to go to that page, make sure that you have a planner visit button, right? Or a specific invite out to your Sunday morning service. All right. So a couple of simple rules that you need to know for writing great copy. Number one is be interesting. Go back and read your ad and just ask yourself one question. 
would you share this copy with someone? So if you saw this post and you were on Facebook, would it be so good that you would actually share it on your page with your friends? And I don't mean because you're the pastor or you're on staff at the church, but I mean, is this actually interesting enough that you would share it, right? And if the answer is no, and you can be honest with yourself, right, then you need to scrap it and rewrite it. It needs to connect emotionally with people and it needs to be good enough that you would share this. And again, not just because you're the pastor or you're in ministry, you would share this because this is good and it's gonna connect with people. You also wanna to remember to write casual copy, right? So if this is something that your 12th grade English teacher would be proud of, scrap it and start over. This should sound more like a coffee shop invite from one friend to another. If you ran into a friend of yours at the coffee shop and you were inviting them out to your men's event, what would that sound like, right? Like you wouldn't go into all the details of what set list you guys are going to be doing that night and your worship leader and all the different small groups and the current sermon series that you're in. No, you would just talk about the things that are relevant to him and how great the event is going to be and the problems it's going to solve for that person, right? So make it more like a coffee shop invite and less like your 12th grade English paper. Casual copy and make it easy to understand. It should sound like a text message from one friend to another. And finally, your ad doesn't have to be funny, just be authentic. Okay, humor is really, really hard in copy in order to actually achieve. Sometimes you'll write stuff that sounds funny to you and the people that know you will read it and be like, that's funny, right? But it's because they know you and your personality. So when they read it, they hear the way that you would say it. It's funny to them, but it's not gonna hit a stranger the same way. It's gonna hit them completely differently. So my advice is don't try to be funny. 99 times out of 100, I would venture to say 999 times out of 1,000, it's gonna fall flat and you're not gonna connect with people. The most important thing is just be authentic. Don't try to be funny, just be authentic. You'll have much better results, you'll reach a lot more people, and you'll have a lot more people who show up to your event or your Sunday morning service or your new sermon series. All right, that's it. So if you guys wanna learn more about church growth or about how to use social media specifically in order to grow your church, head on over to churchgrowthagency.com or click on the link in the description below. And we've got a free training video over there. We'll see you soon.